something that got a lot of TLC was the project manager. Now I'm going to go to file and then project manager and bring up this thing. The project manager has actually been in Premiere for ages, but I never really trusted it in CS4 and CS5. The idea of it is to take a project and then copy everything you're actually using to a new place. So it's a way of archiving a project. The trouble was it used to miss stuff. So I'd say copy everything and it would do most things and miss others. Sometimes as well you'd tell it to trim it to just the stuff that's actually being used in the edit and it wouldn't for all sorts of different reasons. So it was kind of annoying and a bit unreliable. It got better in CS6, but it's considerably improved here in the CC version. And I now use it quite a bit. At the top here, you can see a list of all the sequences you have in the project, and you can choose the ones you want to do. It selected the sequence I was on when I came into it, but I can tick others and choose those as well. Your options are collect all the files and copy them to a new location, or this new thing, consolidate and transcode. The collect files is pretty obvious. You tick on that, you can say don't bother to copy clips that aren't being used. You could include the conform files and the preview files if you want to. If you don't, Premiere can always remake them. And you can rename the media files to match the clip names. So if I wanted to archive this, I probably wouldn't bother to do the conform files and the preview files because it can always redo those and I'm trying to make a small as possible version. And I'd say, yeah, don't use the unused clips maybe rename them to match whatever I've named them on the timeline, tell it where it's going to go. I can click on the calculate button and it'll look at the project and tell me how big the final project's going to be. So for my original project of 30 gigabytes, it's trimmed it down to 700 meg. And then I can click on OK and let it get on with it. And what it'll do is it'll just copy all the used clips and bung them in a new place, which gives me a nice little archive. It is copying everything in that clip. So if I now go to this D Premiere folder, which is where I told it to do it, you can see I've got a subfolder called copied CC versus CS6. That's the name of my project. And inside of that, I've got all the little clips that I've used. So copies of all the clips that I've used and not copies of the other ones. So there's some ABC HD and a bit of HDV and the project file. And that is an archive of everything used in this project. So it's used everything. Some of these clips I might have only used two or three seconds, and if the clip was an hour long, it would have copied the entire hour. But that's a very simple way of doing it. The other nice thing though that you've got is this other option, consolidate and transcode. The first option just makes direct copies of the media. Consolidate and transcode lets you trim it down to just the stuff that's being used on the timeline. These days, we've got a lot of media that's made up of highly compressed stuff. So they're made up of the occasional whole frames, but then other frames which just saves differences between them. You know, in the old days, we'd have DV footage, DV footage, every frame was a whole frame. So it made it very easy to chop it up. Motion JPEG, every frame was one single frame. If you want to chop it, it's very easy, chop it. But if you've got media that's made up of what's called IBMP frames, so the occasional whole frame and then bits of frames, it's very hard to chop it up because you really have to remake it to put those iframes in at the start. You know, you chop it somewhere between the two iframes, between two whole frames, it's gonna not play back properly. It needs an iframe at the start and an iframe every so often. So you can't trim the original stuff, you've got to change it to something else. And that's what the consolidate and transcode does. So having chosen that, I've got various options, which I'll come back to. You've got the same options over here, but you've also got this new one, include handles, which was completely grayed out with the collect. With the handles there, you can type in how much space you want on either side of the clip. So 25 frames means that I'll have the bit used on the timeline and an extra second either side. Extra second either side is nice because it gives me a bit of playroom if I ever want to redo the project later on. Of course, the other obvious question is what format are you saving it into? Premiere comes with a couple. First of all, you can choose to save it out as a sequence, save it out as individual clips or choose a preset. Sequence and individual clips do very similar things. They'll both make a series of clips. But the major difference is that if you choose sequence, it resizes everything to be the same dimensions as your timeline. And if you use individual clips, then everything stays the same size as they were in the first place. 
So imagine you've got a high definition timeline, you've got a bit of standard def and a bit of 4K on there. If you choose sequence, then what happens is everything gets resized to be high def. If you choose individual clips, then they'll stay as 4K or standard definition in whatever format you choose. So most of the time you'll probably just use individual clips. What format is it going into? Now this is where, as it comes out of the box, Premiere is a bit restrictive. Looking at this, I've got DNX HD, which is the Avid one, which is a very nice format, but it's in an MXF file. Not a lot of things can play DNX HD in an MXF file. If you have DNX HD or DNX HR in a QuickTime file, anything can play that as long as you've got QuickTime and you've got the codec, which you can download for nothing from Avid. But if it's in an MXF file, not a lot of programs can play it back. Premiere can, Avid probably can, not a lot else. If I choose DNX, you can see I've only got one option under the preset, match source. It's fairly simple, make it match the source. If I choose MXF, then I've got a few different options of the type of codec. So AVC Intra, which is a Panasonic codec, it's a couple of XD Cam options, and this IMX thing. So if I choose like XD Cam EX, it's going to remake everything and it's going to come out as 1920 XD Cam, which is not a bad format. If I choose XD Cam HD, it's going to come out as 1440 XD Cam. So obviously I've lost something because my original was 1920 in the first place. If I choose IMX, it's a standard definition format, so something else is going to go wrong. The other option you've got is QuickTime, and the only codecs they give you as option is this Cineform codec. Cineform is something you may be aware of. We've known about it for many, many years. Some time ago, it was bought by GoPro. So Cineform is a codec which is owned by GoPro. It's not how they generally film in the cameras, but it's something that you might convert it to afterwards to make it nice and easy to use. It's a very good codec because it makes files that aren't too big but are very, very good quality using what's called wavelet compression. With my clips, which are ABC HD and HDV, it'll make clips that are actually quite a lot bigger than the originals, but they'll be very nice to use clips. And you can see I've got three options. I've got YUV at 10-bit, 12-bit with an alpha channel, or 12-bit with a maximum alpha channel. So you know, that's the best quality, that's the next best, that's the, the least good quality. That is still way better quality than my AVC HD. It's more color space and everything else. So that's the one I would actually use in this case. And it's gonna make me QuickTime GoPro files in Cineform codec, which Premiere will be quite happy with. You won't be able to play them back in other programs without getting hold of the Cineform codec. You can get that from GoPro, just go to the GoPro site, download the free GoPro Studio, and it'll install the Cineform codec for you. But without that, you won't be able to play them back in Windows. So you might want to make something else, but those are the only options you've got. I mean, out of these options, the Cineform is probably going to make the nicest to use files and probably be the smallest. Although if I click the calculate button, it says, oh, that's coming out at 256 megabytes. And that's going to come out smaller than it would be using the copy and collect. I'm going to click on OK, and it's going to go off, and it's going to make little QuickTime files with just the bits being used on the timeline, and archive the whole thing. Now, sometimes you might actually use up more space than you would if you used Copy and Collect. It depends how much of the clips you're not actually using. Let's go and have a look at that one. Second copy, transcoded, here in mod files. Let's double click on those, try and play them in QuickTime. Yep doesn't work. It doesn't work because I haven't gone off to the GoPro site and downloaded GoPro Studio. On the other hand, if I bring that into Premiere, just grab it, drag it into the project window, Premiere gets it because Premiere can read that stuff. It's just other programs can't unless you go and get that codec. Codec is free and it's going to be free as long as GoPro exists. When GoPro don't exist anymore, who knows what's going to happen with it. But anyway, those are the options that you have out of the box. Nice thing is, you can add your own by importing a preset. Just where the devil are they? Well, the thing is, you can make your own up. You make your own up using the media encoder. So I'm just going to make sure the timeline selected, file, export, media. And I can make up a preset from any of the settings that I've got in here. So for example, I could go to, say, QuickTime. And in QuickTime, I can come down here and I can click on the codec and choose any codec we've got. Now, I've downloaded the free Avid codec, so I can make up an Avid QuickTime DNX HDAR file or an HD file. 
Having chosen that, you can go into the codec settings and choose which variation you want. In my case, I'm going to choose this 10-bit one. The 444 one is the best quality one, but takes a lot of space up, so I'm going to choose the 10-bit one. For the rest of it, I'm going to click on this Match Source button, so everything matches the source. Go to the audio, and let's make the audio not AAC, which is what the default is for QuickTime, but rather than that, uncompressed. So this is now making a QuickTime file with uncompressed sound in AVID format. Now you might say, why would you bother to do that when you can do an MXF file? It's because I can play the QuickTime files in anything, basically, as long as I get the AVID codec. And the AVID codec for QuickTime files is free. The AVID codec for MXF files isn't. Now what I want to do is use that in the project manager. So to do it, the first thing I've got to do is save the presets. I'm going to click on this and save it and call it QuickTime DNX HD. So I've now got a preset called that. Now I don't need to export the movie, so I'm going to cancel it. And now all I've got to do is find that preset. I can never remember where Adobe puts them. So what I do is I will just go to my C drive and click on the search and say, look for what I just called it. Wait for it, wait for it. Yay, it found it. Where is that thing? I don't know. Let's right click on it and say open file location. OK, this is where it saves my presets for Premiere. It's in the users folder, DVC, that's the, the name of the user. Documents, Adobe, Adobe Media Encoder, 9 presets. So I could have just gone to my computer, gone into documents, gone to Adobe, Adobe Media Encoder, 9 presets, and there it is. But I can never remember that, which is why I always search for it. Now, having made that, I want to be able to use that in the project manager. It'd be a real pain in the neck for me to have to drill down that when I'm trying to import it. So I'm just going to grab hold of it, copy it, and shove it on the desktop. I always say in training, don't shove stuff on your desktop. So I've just gone and done something I tell you not to. Probably put it somewhere else. But I'm just making a copy of it somewhere that I know where the devil it is. Then I can come back to Premiere and go File project manager and here now I can click on this import preset go to the desktop bang and that brings in my QuickTime file with the QuickTime DNX HD click on calculate see how big it's going to be oh it's going to be considerably bigger than the Cineform stuff you remember I said that the Cineform was particularly good at making reasonably small good looking files well this one is obviously going to go out at 1.25 gigabytes going to be considerably bigger than the Cineform files but it's a different format Let's go OK, just says you want to save it, and then it goes off and it transcodes that. And I make a version of this timeline with all the clips on there, but they're converted into Avid QuickTime format. And you can basically bring in just about any preset that way. You've got to make it in Media Encoder, then find it, and then you can use it inside of the Project Manager. Once you've made and imported a preset, it will stay there. Now the format that you use, of course, there's, there's loads and loads of options and there isn't one perfect option. Cineform is nice, which is why Adobe have now included it with Premiere, because it does really good files but keeps the file size down. So the only downside is you need to get GoPro Studio to be able to play them in other things. Avid is nice because you can make QuickTime files and with a free codec you can play them back on other computers. Of course, long term, you're saying, right, I'm doing this for an archive. Maybe I want to open this project up in 10 years time. So I'm going to stick it on the shelf and then open it in 10 years time. 10 years down the road, will Avid still be in business? Will GoPro or Cineform still be in business? Well, obviously, we can hope so, but you can't be entirely sure. The sort of things that you definitely know you're going to be open in the future are things that actually a lot of people use. So probably things like XD Cam, even MPEG-4 files, that sort of thing. But it's not a straightforward choice. I mean, an MPEG-4 file, you can probably be able to open on computers for the next 20, 30 years. It doesn't need any company to stay in business to be able to do them. But an MP4 file is heavily compressed. So what I'm doing then is taking my files and to archive it, I'm making another heavily compressed file, which then if I re-edit it, it gets recompressed again. And every time you recompress something very, very heavily, it introduces more artifacts. So an MP4 file would make a nice small file, but maybe isn't the best archiving option if I want to do a lot of editing and color correction on it maybe later on. It's a tough one. There isn't a perfect choice. Adobe have obviously plumped for Cineform as being a good choice. 
It's a good choice because it makes nice small files that are very usable. You might say, why don't they choose ProRes? ProRes has been around for ages. Lots and lots of people use it. Well, there's two good reasons you don't want to choose that. One is that you can't make ProRes on a PC, which would be a real struggle for us since we're doing PCs. But the second is you are dependent on Apple continuing with ProRes forever. And I'm not entirely sure they're going to do that. They needed ProRes when they had Final Cut Pro because a lot of things had to be converted, but they don't necessarily need it with their new one. And anyway, they don't seem to be that too much bothered about editing. So really, will they continue with it? Will they support it on Windows anymore? Who knows? Much better to probably to go off to something else. But that's how you use the project manager. Something that I didn't use to trust, but now I've used it quite a lot with the new version and I haven't had a problem with it. It's always worked. I've done another one, which is an MP4 preset. Let's make that one up. Now it's going to take longer because MP4 is harder to make, but I have got a very nice fast computer, so hopefully it won't take too long. What it should do is make smaller files than the Avid ones. They'll probably look good, but they won't be so good if you start to remake them. So this is my Avid stuff. Let's right click on that and choose properties. And that comes out at 1.36 gigabytes. If I go to the MP4 variation, select that lot. Find out how big it is. Oh, that's coming at 236 megabytes, quite considerably smaller. If I open that project up, play the thing back, and well, it actually looks okay, because MP4 files can look very good, but it is a lot more heavily compressed than the other versions, so it won't necessarily hold up so well to remaking it, or a bit of color correction or something like that. Notice I had a little stutter there because I've got a morph cut in the middle of this lot and it's not rendered. That's why I had to stutter because I chose not to copy the render files. So there's lots and lots of options to say there isn't a perfect one, unfortunately. I wish there was. There are times when you wish life wasn't quite as complicated as it actually is. But it's great that we have a decent project manager that works because I'm always being asked by people how to archive stuff. Well, now I've got a way of archiving it. I still like to get things right in advance. I still prefer to make up projects and make sure I put everything I use for a project in a particular folder. But if I don't do that, the project manager can still collect together everything I need for the project and shove it somewhere for me and transcode it if I want to. Another nice option in the project manager are these two here, convert image sequences and convert After Effects compositions. Image sequences, you know, typically you've been doing 3D animation, you've rendered out as a bunch of images, it's quite nice to convert it into a video clip instead, so you can tick that, and instead of saving a bunch of separate images, it'll convert it all to one clip. But this is my favourite one, convert After Effects compositions to clips. So you might have some dynamically linked After Effects compositions. You open that project up in five years time, you've got to have After Effects on the same system as well, and all the stuff that makes up the After Effects composition for that dynamic link to work. If you haven't got that, then your dynamic link, your After Effects comp on the timeline will have a big hole. If you tick that, then it'll convert any dynamically linked After Effects compositions to clips. So, okay, you can't go back into After Effects and fiddle with them, but at least it means you don't have to remember to bring After Effects and all the assets which are in After Effects as well as the Premiere ones. Because this project manager will only deal with stuff that's in Premiere. It won't deal with stuff that you may have imported directly into After Effects as part of a composition that gets around it. That means you have a Premiere project with everything in it that you need for the project and you don't have to worry about still being able to get into After Effects.